we used our whole life to get what we want for something greater to occur, and it goes against thousands of years of programming. It's not something that you get good at doing once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to keep practicing. So, so, so you really have two ways to look at it. If you're, if you're living in stress and you're living in survival and that system is switched on, then everything will be a threat. Mm -hmm. Everything will be a danger. Mm -hmm. Everything will be a reason to rush, to be impatient, to be frustrated, to be judgmental. Because that's, that's the consciousness, that's the emotion we're living by. So now you, you have a, a problem with a coworker, you have a problem with your partner, whatever it is that you use as an example, and you have to give a presentation. Now, now you really have one of two choices. Either be victimized, by those conditions in your life and you stay in that emotional state and I'll say to you, Jay, why are you that way? Well, I'm this way because of this person, this circumstance, that person or circumstance is controlling the way I feel and the way I think. Anything that controls the way I feel and the way I think, I'm victim to, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Or I actually can be a creator now, okay? So when it's the hardest, it matters the most. Okay, so there's going to be a story a valid story that's going to go along with those emotions mm -hmm. that you're going to have to give up that you can address at another time from a different state. If you're altered in that state and you say something, you do something, you write the email, you send the text, you'll always regret it. You'll always say, I should have never said that. I should have never done that. We gotta learn that we're in an altered state at that time. So there's only one of two choices. You either stay there the whole day and tell everybody that story, or you say, okay, let me take a moment. Remember that this is the experiment called life. Okay, let me practice getting relaxed in my heart. Let me slow the animal down. Let me practice that. Let me take a few minutes. Now, let me breathe. Let me get my state back. Let me change everything. Okay, let me remember who I am, who I want to be when I open my eyes, and let me practice that again. Now, even if you had to do that 10 times in one day, I would say it was a day worth living. Mm. I would say it was a day worth living. And when we do walking meditations... Uh, in our, our retreats, we're doing walking meditations so you can practice doing it with your eyes open. Yes. Like if you're going to be relaxed in your heart and awake in your brain, and you can do it with your eyes closed, okay, let's take it out for a test drive. Yeah. Let me open my eyes. Let me pay a little bit more attention to my inner world. Let me practice feeling this feeling. Let me practice feeling this way, and let my brain do what it does. Let me get to finally change my physiology. Let me change my state. Let me walk as the healed person. Let me walk as the abundant person. Let me walk as if my prayers are answered. Let me walk in this state. If I keep practicing that over and over, it's going to become a habit, right? Yeah. So, so we hit it as many ways as we can. We have at least seven or eight different breaths that we do because we see how they all work in the brain. We have all kinds of meditations. We have sitting meditations. We have standing and walking meditations. We have laying down meditations because we want you to be able to do it with your eyes open, with your eyes closed, standing, walking any way you can so that you don't default and return back to that person. Now, if you do default, you didn't fail. Mm. That's a program. You just went unconscious. And how many times do we have to forget until we stop forgetting and start remembering? That's mm. the moment of change. Mm. No, one, no one cares how many times you fell off the bicycle. If you ride the bicycle now, you ride the bike. So it's, it's the constant process uh, every single day. And I think that Sometimes we look for evidence in our life and it hasn't happened. And I think it's so important that we still show up. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, that's where you're changing the most. And when you get to that point where you could care less if it happens or not, because you feel so happy, so grateful for who you are, get ready because your life is going to begin to change in magical ways. I'm so proud of our community, not because they do the work every day, not because they're trying to be good or please anybody. They do it because they don't want the magic yeah. to really end. And the experiment is too good. Is they don't, they're going to continue to be a creator in their life. So then when they change the way they feel and the way they think and they start seeing evidence in their life, they're going to remember what they did inside of them to produce that outcome. And they're going to believe they're creator of their life and less of the victim of their life. And that's empowerment. Yeah. And you can't take that away from anybody. You can't tell me now you're too sick to do that. You can't tell me you're too old to do that. You can't tell me you had a horrible past, you're too out of shape. You can't even tell me that you never meditated before because we have people that come, they know nothing, they get dragged by somebody and they have the most profound experience because they're not expecting anything. And we have data that suggests that when you don't expect anything, you're going to have a profound moment. So everybody can do it. There's nobody that's so special to be excluded from this process. And we have had people that have had brutal pasts 
with abuse, with trauma. We, we've seen the Navy SEALs and prisoners with horrible, horrible memories uh, literally transform, literally transform uh, in seven days. And I could say right now that you make the time every single day to decide who you're going to present to the world and you get up as that person. You're going to fall a lot of times, but sooner or later, once you start to change, it's pretty hard to go back. Yeah, I think we so easily forget that anything that we've achieved today, any place we've got to was a commitment to refining the process. It was a disciplined effort to make a tiny improvement on something else. When you give the cycle example, the bike example, the idea that you got back up and you maybe changed one thing. You knew to shift your balance differently. You knew to pedal at a different pace. Like you tried these different things. And it's what you're saying, that it's an experiment. If we keep trying the same thing, we get the same result.